study. Now here's the part that I really wanted to get to. This is some, this is some good stuff, or some actually bad stuff, but it's good stuff as far as good stuff to preach about, but bad things uh, to be involved in. And that is that Satan is the prince of the power of the air. I mentioned this a little bit the other day, but I have uh, a lot of elaboration to do on it. In Ephesians 2, in verse 2, this is another title of Satan. Ephesians 2, in verse 2. It says, Wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. So Satan is called the prince of the power of the air. So being a spirit, Satan and his devils, they do travel through the air, right? They can, they can do that. They, they, don't, um, they don't have to have physical um, appendages like we do to transport themselves. They can, just like angels, they can just move through the air. And after being cast to the earth, and Satan's dominion was the atmosphere of the earth. And we talked about the three castings of Satan already, and the second casting was down to the earth. So at that point, he's confined to the atmosphere of this earth. Air, I will just define it for you. I, I think everybody probably knows what it is, but air is the transparent, invisible, inodorous, and tasteless gaseous substance which envelops the earth and is breathed by all land animals, one of the four elements of the ancients, but now known to be a mechanical mixture of oxygen and nitrogen with the constant presence of a small quantity of carbonic acid gas and traces of many other substances as contaminations. So I think everybody probably knew what that was. It's also the whole body of air surrounding or in popular language above the earth, the atmosphere, hence the apparently free space above our heads in which birds fly and clouds float, also considered as a medium for the operation of aircraft, a collective term for aircraft or aerial power, especially in combination as air arm, air cover, air offensive, air warfare. So this is the medium in which Satan operates is the air. And for the last 120 years, Satan has made special use of the power of the air over which he's the prince. He's really made a lot of, of headway there using the air. Air is defined here, which is a, uh, another uh, different definition. The air is, uh, the air considered as a medium for the transmission of radio waves, colloquially radio. Secondly, it's uh, when he uses the phrase on the air being broadcast by radio transmission, so off the air. We've heard that, right? You're on the air, you're off the air, right? That's the, the air waves that, that, uh, electro, that, that radios transmit electromagnetically, and I talked about that here a few weeks ago. So radio, television, satellites, cellular towers, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, they all transmit messages and information through the air. Satan's the prince of the power of the air. Now who else but the prince of the power of the air is in control of all these technologies then? If Satan owns the air waves, right, he owns the air, who is in control of things that get transmitted across the medium that Satan is in dominion over? Of course he's in control of it. Through electronic media, Satan has been able to control and influence the minds of billions of people across the world. He's the prince of the power of the air. Satan controls the media, Hollywood, and the entertainment industries, which all broadcast over the air. And he's been able to sway our culture away from God and his word through them, which is what I was talking about a minute ago. Now, I don't know if you know this or not, and this was kind of a shock to me years ago when I heard this, and I almost didn't even believe it. I just thought, this kind of seems fanciful. But I, I have proof for you out of their own mouths. I'm going to read you quotes out of these people's own mouths and give you the link that, that you can watch it on YouTube yourself, and you can see them say these things out of their mouths. Many actors and actresses have admitted to selling their soul to the devil. That is the truth. They have admitted it. And I just have a few of them here for you. I have a link to a documentary, which you can learn a lot more. And I'm sure that's just scratching the surface of it. There are tons of them. And for every one of them that blatantly, openly admits it, I would imagine there are dozens of them that don't, that yet are still 
possessed with devils. Many of these celebrity types have said that devils have possessed them and gave them the ability in, uh, to act and to write scripts. That is the truth. We are being entertained by devils. That is a fact. All of us. We have all been entertained by devils. You let that sink in. I, the, the, in the documentary by uh, Pastor Jason Cooley down here in Northfield, um, it, it, was a good, it was basically a sermon that he did, and then they put the sermon to still images for the most part. So everything he's saying, then they're showing images of what he's talking about and, and the people and the quotes and all this stuff and, and all the stuff that they put into movies, subliminal things and so on. But anyway, he made that point. It just hit me like a ton of bricks. We are being entertained by devils. Not just movie actors, musicians, artists. We are being entertained by devils. Let me just give you some examples of the devils we're being entertained by. One of them is a guy by the name of Denzel Washington. Everybody, anybody ever heard of Denzel Washington? You would not think of a devil worshiper when you think of Denzel Washington, would you? You wouldn't think of a guy that's possessed of the devil, would you? Well, let me just read you what the man said. And then I, got the, I have the link here. You can go watch him say it himself. He was interviewed on 60 Minutes. And he revealed the following. This is from his interview. And I actually, I watched the video and I transcribed all these. So if there is any error in the transcription, it is mine. And it was not done intentionally. But it, and I reviewed it a couple times. So I think it's, it's accurate with maybe, you know, minuscule little, little, you know, I might have messed up a word here or there or something. But anyway, you can check it out for yourself. Washington says, basically what I did, he's talking about this, this part that he played in this incredible movie. I'm, I don't even know what the movie was, but it was some part that was just amazing, like mind-blowing his acting. And the guy was asking him about it. And Washington says, basically what I did was got on my knees and sort of communicated with the spirits. And, I, and when I came out, I was in charge. The host says, powerful scene. Washington says, powerful scene. I couldn't have acted that. I couldn't have written that down and made a decision to play that. So before he played this scene, he went and, quote, communicated with the spirits and came out, and now he's in control. And now he does this incredible acting that he admits, I couldn't have done. I could not have acted out that scene on my own. There was something in him that was acting out that scene. Anybody ever heard of a woman named Oprah Winfrey? Of course, everybody's heard of Oprah Winfrey, right? The queen of talk, right? The, probably the most, one of the most influential women in the country, if not the world. Oprah Winfrey is a devil. This woman is a devil. She is a new age devil, and this is a fact. Let me just read you some of her own words here. This is from her book, Journey to the Beloved. She, she starred in a movie about some slaves or something called Beloved. I, never, I didn't see it. I'm not, not familiar with it. But anyway, here's what she said in her own book. I was striving to create a life that in many ways you cannot articulate will be felt, I'm sorry, I left out a word there. I was striving to create a life that in many ways you cannot articulate will be felt in the spirit of the character. I ask my body to be the carrier for the spirits of those who have come before me in a way that is most meaningful to the character that I have created. She wants her body to be uh, in, uh, in what is the word I'm looking for, possessed by these spirits so that she can bring these spirits out of her own body. Let me read you a little passage here from Time Magazine. This is an article called Daring to Go There, Time Magazine, June 24, 2001. Uh, I got where Time Magazine is underlined there. That's a hyperlink. You can go click on that. Go read the article for yourself. It says, there are times, though perhaps not many, when even the queen of talk is at loss, at a loss for words, when her lively brand of armchair wisdom collapses under the weight of personal revelation. Oprah Winfrey calls these her go-there moments, spiritual episodes of divine guidance that far transcend the chatty exchanges with her studio audiences about her fiancé Stedman, her best friend Gail, or even her dog Sophie and Solomon that often masquerade as intimacy. It is during these moments, usually while jogging the winding trails on her Indiana farm, that Winfrey becomes overwhelmed by the sense that old spirits are trying to get in touch with her. And it is during these moments that the woman who loves to talk stops dead in her tracks simply to listen. Sometimes the epiphanies carry the voices of Negro slaves, Joe and Emily and Dara, 
Sue and Bess and Sarah. Winfrey says she has come to know each of them personally and calls them in at will to guide her in her work. Did you hear what that said? She calls in the spirits of these dead slaves to come in and guide her in her work. She is a consulter with familiar spirits. She is a devil. This woman is evil, wicked. And I'll give you the verse later on that tells you that. This is Time Magazine. I mean, this is not tinfoil hat conspiracy website thing, right? I mean, this is, this is mainstream. The spirits began visiting her a few years ago, shortly after she bought the, prop, the property records of various plantations at Sotheby's auction. A collector of slave memorabilia, Winfrey cherishes the slave papers because these documents serve as the best vessel for connecting her through name, age, and price to the real human legacy of slavery. While, film, while filming Beloved, she kept the slave inventory in her trailer on the set. She dedicated scenes to individual slaves, get this, by lighting a candle and praying aloud to them. Often though, she became so emotional that she couldn't perform the scene. Praying, lighting candles and praying to these dead spirits. A seeker of familiar spirits. She's a wicked woman that's going to burn in hell. And then here's a quote from Oprah. I tried to empty myself and let the spirit of Seth inhabit me. And that I couldn't actually find a citation where she said that the quote is all over the internet. So I, I assume it was a legitimate quote from her. You can check that out for yourself. But uh, the other one is from Time Magazine. So I don't think there's any uh, question about that one. Oprah said that she uh, tries to empty herself and fill herself with the spirit of Seth. It just really brought to mind a scripture about somebody emptying themselves and then being filled with devils. Uh, Matthew 12, 43 through 45. This is the passage that I was referring to a minute ago that I said we would get back to. Matthew 12, 43 through 45. And she's a new ager. She's denied you know, Jesus Christ, denied the deity of Christ. This has her own little Church of Oprah, little, yeah, hundreds of thousands of members, Church of Oprah thing. You can look her up on your own time. Matthew 12, 43 through 45. It says, When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came, and when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Oprah says, I tried to empty myself and let the spirit of Seth inhabit me. Yeah, so then the spirit comes back and finds Oprah nice and empty, and guess what happens? Verse 45, Then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and entereth in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so, it shall it be also unto this wicked generation. A woman full of devils. And she has influence for, well, I mean, Oprah was on TV when I was a little kid. She's been on TV for 30, 40 years. I don't know, a long time. And she has influenced millions and millions of people. One of the richest women in the world, too. How do you think she got her fame? Probably sold her soul to the devil. The same spirits that she now communicates with and talks with. Denies Jesus Christ openly. Anybody ever heard of a guy named Nicolas Cage? Right? Everybody's probably heard of him, probably seen movies with him. I I saw some movies with Nicolas Cage years ago myself. I can't remember which ones they were, but I have seen him in movies before. Nicolas Cage was interviewed on the Showbiz 411, some, some show, I don't, no, I'm not familiar with it. And he said the following, and I, I transcribed the interview here for you. The host says, you developed an acting discipline that you've referred to as nov, uh, Nuveo, I think, Nuveo Shamanic. Is that correct? Yeah, he says. What are the core principles, the host asks. Cage says this. I have been told that um, all actors really hail from the early medicine men and the shamans in the villages pre-Christianity where they would put on masks and act out and really what, and this isn't, I put a little sick there because it, his sentence didn't make sense, but anyway, and really what they were probably pretty crazy, but they would go in and find answers to questions. Today, you're called psychotic if you do that. But that was his words, not mine. But it's all semantics. So what I would do is I'd put on 
Afro-Caribbean paint, like a white and black paint, and black out my eyes so I look like this sort of Afro-Caribbean voodoo icon. And then I would sew in bits of Egyptian artifacts that were thousands of years old under my costume and gather some onyx and tourmal uh, tourmaline or something that was meant to have vibrations and who knows if it works or doesn't. But for me, it was an idea of like trying to stimulate my mind or trick my mind into believing I was this character from another dimension. And I would walk on the set and then wouldn't speak to anyone or anybody. Wouldn't say a word, so I projected this aura of horror which created fear in my fellow actors, which then inspired me to believe I really was this character. Sounds like a devil to me. Anybody ever heard of a guy named Jack Nicholson? Of course you have, right? Very popular actor. Very talented actor. And most of these guys are. Where do you think they get their talent? Well, listen to, a, you ever hear of a woman named Shirley MacLaine? She's a devil. Man, what a wicked woman. And she just rude. She's a B word is what that woman is. Just if you, when you click on this link here and you watch this, this little talk she was given and what she said about Jack Nicholson, if I was Nicholson, I wanted to go up there and slap her. But anyway, I guess, you know, they both have the same father, so they're probably not going to get too mad at each other, right? They're all, they're all the same. So Shirley MacLaine, uh, she was talking at the um, AFI, the American Film Institute Awards Ceremony, and she was talking about her experience that she had acting with Jack Nicholson. And here's what she said. You know, Jack Nicholson, A Few Good Men, wasn't he in that, you know, and various movies, tons of movies. He, whatever that sick movie was, the Here's Johnny thing where he's chopping through the door with the axe, The Shining. I mean, he's a wicked, I mean, that's just, just look at, you just look at that. I've never seen that movie, but just look at that scene and tell me he's not a wicked man. I, you just can't act like that and not be a wicked man. Here's what Shirley MacLaine says. You can watch it for yourself. We launched into the first take. She's talking about this love scene that, that her and Nicholson did. We launched into the first take and two voices came out of you. She's talking to Nicholson in the crowd, okay? So she's talking to Jack. You remember this? Remember when this happened? Remember we were acting out this part? And she's, so she's talking to Nicholson, okay? And the camera keeps switching back from her and Nicholson, okay? All right, now that I've set the stage. We launched into the first take and two voices came out of you, speaking to Nicholson. Do you remember this? Nicholson smiles and nods, so he is affirming. Oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, two voices came out of me at the same time. Two voices, and they were simultaneous words, but they were two levels of sound. And I looked over at you, you were amazed, I was amazed, and you said, well, Cheryl, I'm many different people. I said, no, Jack, you're channeling. And the audience bursts into laughter. Channeling. Yeah, channeling a devil. Except two devils apparently didn't, you know, the devil didn't know what the right left hand, the right hand didn't know what they were doing, and they were both speaking out of his mouth at the exact same time. Two different voices, words coming out at the exact same time. He's a devil. And they all laughed about this, like this is just funny. I didn't think it was funny. Anybody ever heard of a guy named Kanye West? He's a rapper. I've never listened to this fool myself. But Kanye West, in one of his songs, and, you, and I got a link here, you can watch it for yourself. I would not recommend listening to this guy. But anyway, he said the following, I sold my soul to the devil. He just said it. Oh, he's probably just kidding. He's probably not just kidding. He probably really did sell his soul to the devil. Why do you think he's now Kanye West and everybody knows him or most everybody, I mean, probably everybody's heard of, or a lot of people have heard of him anyway. Anybody ever heard of a woman named Katy Perry? Right, very popular singer, I guess. I've never heard, of it. maybe I've heard her songs and didn't know it, but I don't know anything about her at all. I, I've heard the name, but, um, and that just shows how culturally ignorant I am probably. But uh, let me read you what Katy Perry says. She admits to selling her soul to the devil in an interview. This was, uh, this was an interview, I don't know what, it was some kind of a show anyway. Somebody was interviewing her. You can, you can watch the video for yourself. Katy says, what was going on in my life at 15, and that's how I got introduced to the music industry, because I swear that I wanted to be like the Amy Grant of music, but it didn't work out, and so I sold my soul to the devil. She's saying, you know how I got where I am now? Started out when I was 15, really wanted to be the Amy Grant, and I, I must admit, I don't, I've heard of that name, but I don't know who she is either, but anyway, she wanted to be Amy Grant, and I realize, you know, I'm probably so ignorant of so many things, and you probably think that I'm 
a little bit kooky. But anyway, um, she wanted to be Amy Grant when she was young, and it didn't work out. So how did she get to the level of fame she is now? I sold my soul to the devil, she says. That's how these people get great. And it makes sense. Let me read it to you. I mentioned it earlier, but let me just read it to you because it, maybe you just think, ah, oh, you know, they're probably just saying that. I'll show you how the devil works. Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. In verse 8. Again the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And he said unto him, All these will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. I will give thee all these kingdoms. You don't think that he could give them power and fame and to become a super famous artist or actor. Of course he could. I sold my soul to the devil, she said. And you see what happens to these people. Look at uh, Miley Cyrus. Used to be Hannah, Hannah Montana, right? Cute little girl sung the, I don't know what, I, I, I've heard her songs. I don't know what they were. But anyway, these cute little songs, uh, probably harmless back then, maybe not. I don't know. But anyway, you know what she is now, right? I don't listen to her, but I've seen, I've seen pictures and clips of her. She is a rank, slut, disgusting, despicable person. Just gross, awful. I don't know how to describe her in any more descriptive words. She's just a horrible person. What happened to her? Sold her soul to the devil, right? What does the devil do when he's done with you? When sin hath finished, it brings forth death. My guess is she's not going to live out half her days. A lot of these people don't live out half their days. When Satan's done with them, he kills them. What a fool. Why would anybody do that? Sell your soul to the devil for some temporal fame, and you can see what's happened to the previous people that have done it. I'm just giving you a few. Anybody heard of Eminem? I will admit, and this is sad to say, that I used to listen to this reprobate when I was back in high school. He's horrible. I would definitely not recommend listening to him. Why did he get so popular? Why does he have such ability? And I will admit, this guy is horrible. Please do not ever listen to him. But I will tell you, this guy's got talent. Now, I mean, I'm not a, I'm not, I don't like rap music anymore, you know, since I was a reprobate. But anyway, this guy I can recognize has talent. How did he get that talent? Well, he tells you. This is in a song, and I think this song was something about goodbye to Hollywood. I looked up the lyrics. I saw, I, I, I heard the clip of it in a video, and then I looked up the lyrics. And I don't know if he's just flipping the finger to Hollywood or what, but anyway, here's how he got where he is, according to his own words. The boy in the bubble who never could adapt, I'm trapped. If I could go back, I never would have rapped. I sold my soul to the devil. I'll never get it back. Isn't that nice? Sold his soul to the devil. Anybody ever heard of Beyonce? Right? Very popular singer. I don't listen to her either, but I know who she is. I'm not that clueless that I haven't heard of her. She admits that she's only able to sing the way that she does by a spirit or a devil that possesses her. Let me read it to you out of her own words. She says, this is in an interview. Uh, you, I got the YouTube link there. You can watch it yourself. She says, I can try, but then it just doesn't happen. I can sing notes and sing strong and do all these things that when I'm just by myself, I can't do. I don't think she means by herself in a room. I mean, she's by herself, like not inhabited by devils, you know? She said, and I remember right before I performed, I raised my hands up, and it was kind of the first time I felt something else come into me. And she's got some split personality thing she talks about. I don't remember the name of it, but some, some devil that inhabits her, which is her alter ego or whatever. And yeah, she literally said, I lifted up my hands, and something came into me, and then I can hit the notes I can never hit before. I can sing like I can't sing when I'm by myself. She's a devil-possessed woman. And all these people are in the Illuminati. I mean, I think it's pretty obvious. They all do the Illuminati hand, the 666 hand signals. They all do it, you know, over their eyes. They're covering one eye. They're doing the whatever, like all the eye things, all the pentagrams all over everything. If you just look, at, just do, and I haven't even hardly done any looking into it, but just, just very little, all-seeing eye, pyramids all over everything. I mean, these people are devil-worshipping Illuminati Satanists. Anybody heard of Bob Dylan? Old, old guy, right? He's been around since the 60s, I think. My dad probably listened to Bob Dylan maybe back in the day. Is he from here? Oh, I didn't know that. Huh. Well, 
I guess Minnesota has their share of reprobates too. Bob Dylan admitted in a 60 Minutes interview that he sold his soul to Satan in his youth and that he could have never written some of his songs himself, but he did it by magic. Let me, I'm going to read you the interview that I transcribed, that I watched. The host says, why do you still do it? Why are you still out here? Dylan says, well, it goes back to the destiny thing, and I made a bargain with, you know, long time ago. Or with, I'm sorry, let me read it. Well, it goes back to the destiny thing, and I made a bargain with it, you know, long time ago, and I'm holding up my end. The host says, what was your bargain? Dylan says, to get where um, I am now. The host says, should I ask who you made the bargain with? Dylan says, with, with you know, with the uh, chief commander. The host says, on this earth? Dylan says, in this earth and in the world we can't see. Who do you suppose the chief commander is in this earth and in the world we can't see? Who's the chief commander? Who is the prince of the power of the air? Who's the god of this world? The devil, Satan. He made a pact with the devil. He made a bargain with the devil, the chief commander in this world and in the world we can't see. The host says, you ever look over a music that you've written and look back at it and say, whoa, that surprised me. Dylan says, I used to. Uh, I don't do that anymore. Uh, I don't know how I got to write those songs. Host says, what do you mean you don't know how? Dylan says, well, those early songs were like almost magically written. And then he quotes the lyrics from his song, It's All Right, Ma, which I wasn't familiar with. And that was way back in the 60s. Well, to try, and Dylan continues, well, try to sit down and write something like that. There's a magic to that. And it's not Sig Freud and Roy kind of magic. You know, it's a different kind of penetrating magic. And uh, I did it at one time. Ho says, you don't think you can do it today? Uh-uh. Does that disappoint you? Well, you can't do something forever. And uh, I did it once. And I can do other things now, but I can't do that. There you have it. Sold his soul to the chief commander, the devil, Satan. And he's holding up his end of the bargain. Maybe that's why he's still alive. He's still holding up his end of the bargain. Break your end of the bargain and see what happens to you. And that's happened to many. And let me tell you, this is just the beginning. If you watch that documentary, which I'm going to recommend to you here in a few minutes, you'll see a lot more. You ever heard of Michael Landon? The... Um, Highway to Heaven show, and uh, Little House on the Prairie. You think, just totally innocent, right? Little House on the Prairie, I used to watch it when I was a kid. That guy was a devil. He was a devil. He said that he would sit down, and this power would come over him and enable him to write these scripts that he couldn't have written himself, and just to write like crazy until the whole thing was done. He was a devil. His daughters said that he, whenever he on his deathbed, he was reaching up and clasping his hands and screaming that he wasn't ready to go yet. Oh, he knew what was coming. He knew what was coming. That guy was a devil. James Dean, you know, way back, actor a long, long time ago, bad boy. Marilyn Monroe, you see what happens to them when Satan's done with them. Madonna, these people are devils. Madonna admits to being a worshiper of the Kabbalah. She admits to being a New Ager. She's a wicked devil. And that's just the beginning. I mean, there's so many more. These are just some of the actors and entertainers who have admitted to selling their souls to Satan and being possessed by spirits or devils who give them the power that they can do what they do. You see, these entertainers are wicked people who consult with familiar spirits. Let me show you what God says about what these people do. Leviticus 19 and verse 31. I know I'm going a little bit long today, but I, I definitely want to finish this. Leviticus 19 and verse 31. Remember Oprah? You know, she communicates with these spirits and has dialogues with them and everything. This is called seeking a familiar spirit. And God says the penalty for this is death. Leviticus 19 and verse 31. Leviticus 19 and verse 31. It says, Regard not them that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. Familiar spirits. These spirits that come to you and communicate with you, that you're familiar with, right? Like Oprah says, I know them by name. They come and they talk to me. Right? Familiar spirits. This is what the Bible's talking about. Leviticus 20 and verse 27. Leviticus 20 and verse 27 
says, A man also, or a woman that hath a familiar spirit, or that is a wizard, shall surely be put to death. They shall stone them with stones. Their blood shall be upon them. Let me tell you what. These Hollywood actors and actresses and singers, most of them, a lot of them would be dead if we were living under Old Testament law back in Israel. Look at Deuteronomy 18, 10 through 12. Deuteronomy 18, 10 through 12. Deuteronomy 18, 10 through 12. It says, There shall not be found any among you, there shall not be found among you any one that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord, and because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. What do you think the future is of this country when we have our entire entertainment industry filled with devils? God drove out the nations of the land of Canaan to let Israel have their land because they were full of devils. And guess what? Our country's full of devils, and our entertainment's full of devils. What do you think is going to happen? They passed their sons and their daughters through the fire because they were influenced by devil worshipers. What happens now? We abort millions of babies every year, or over a million babies every year. Pass the kids through the fire. Kill them. And some of these types are sickos, and they're pedophiles, and it's been shown, and it's been exposed that pedophilia is the open secret in Hollywood. These people are pedophiles. They're wicked. And then they do other weird stuff like this uh, what's that called? The, the blood stuff where they take the blood and paint it on the walls. I don't know if you've heard of this. I Don't even look it up. Uh, spirit cooking. They call it spirit cooking. I don't know if you that whole pizza gate um, thing where they expose that where you look and you don't know what I'm talking about and that's fine. But the, the pizza gate thing. Ben Swan exposed that and then he went dark on social media for a year. They, they got to him and now he's back. But anyway um, yeah, some, some pizza shop in Washington D.C. And it came out in some of those emails with John Podesta. Remember John Podesta, all the, all the, he was Hillary Clinton's um, campaign manager. And they, they hacked all those emails and they found all this stuff. And there's all this weird cryptic language in there. And I don't remember the terms, but that pedophiles use certain terms to refer to certain things because, of course, they're not going to use the real terms. And the FBI is on to this kind of thing. And they kept referring to this pizza place. And one of the signs of the pedophilia signs is a pyramid that, that kind of like a line that's in a pyramid and it goes and it keeps getting smaller and smaller with, a, with an arrow and kind of like a line that's, that's made in the form of a pyramid. Anyway, that's a sign. I don't know what, who knows what it means, but anyway, it's a pedophilia sign. Well, this pizza place had, you can see it on Ben Swan, if, if that, you can probably find it somewhere. Just search Ben Swan Reality Check Pizza Gate. You can find it. Anyway, the sign of this pizza place, what the pizza, the triangular shape of the pizza was this pedophilia sign with the little thing with the arrow in the middle. Whenever they were exposed by some people in the alternative media, they changed the sign. Now their sign doesn't show that anymore. It's different. It just kind of looks like a piece of pizza or something. They think there's a pedophile ring being run out of this pizza place there in Washington, D.C., and that the Podestas were involved in. Of course, nobody's ever going to investigate this, and anybody that would would be dead. Well, hopefully, I don't, hopefully, I'm not dead for, for talking about it. But anyway, um, so where was I going with that? Anyway, they're pedophiles. They're wicked. And they do crazy, that blood, what did I call it? Spirit cooking stuff. And I'm telling you, these are evil people. Evil people. We're being entertained by devils. Saul died for consulting with familiar spirits. Look at 1 Chronicles 10 and verse 13. 1 Chronicles 10 and verse 13. 1 Chronicles 10 and verse 13. And I don't know for sure that there's that pedophile rings going on there in that pizza place, but there's some really weird stuff. And when you start, you look into that, I don't know. I'm sure we'll never find out. First Chronicles 10 and verse 13. So Saul died for his transgression, which he committed against the Lord, even against the word of the Lord, which he kept not, and also for asking counsel of one that had a familiar spirit to inquire of it. You remember when he went to the witch at Endor, right? 
and he consulted with the familiar spirit. She brought up Samuel. Saul died for that. He died for consulting familiar spirits. And these celebrities deserve the same thing. And they'll get it someday from God. We ought not to have fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Look at Ephesians 5, 11 through 12. Ephesians 5, 11 through 12. You ever wonder, and you, if, you, if you watch this documentary, you'll learn about it, but you ever wonder what the word Hollywood means? Why they call it Hollywood? I never even gave it a second thought. I never thought about it. Hollywood. Holly tree. The holly tree. Remember Christmas decked the halls with boughs of holly? The holly tree is a symbol in paganism. It's, like a, it's a big thing to them. It's an evergreen tree. It's an evergreen tree with leaves, though. But it's a, it's a fertility thing to them. Hollywood. Holly tree. I was, I mean, I, unless there's some other explanation, I don't know, when I heard that, I'm just like, man, that makes sense. That makes sense. Ephesians 5, 11 through 12. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. We're not to have fellowship. We're supposed to reprove those things. That's what I'm doing right now. You know, Paul ran into a woman that had a spirit of divination, and he didn't listen to her. He rebuked her, and he cast that devil out. Acts 16, 16 through 18. Acts 16, 16 through 18. And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much, sane by, much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. And this did she many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. This devil was possessing her and telling her certain things to say. And you know what she said? In this case was actually true. These men are the servants of the Most High God and are come here to tell us the way of salvation. There's nothing wrong with what she said. She was speaking the truth in that, in that case, right? But Paul wouldn't have it because he knew that it was a devil using some of the truth to get people into bondage and lies and deception. Satan's ministers are called ministers of righteousness. 2 Corinthians 11, verses 14 through 15. 2 Corinthians 11. I just want you to think about this. 2 Corinthians 11, 13 through 15. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. His ministers are ministers of righteousness. Now you think about some of the things that Hollywood puts out, like Little House on the Prairie. And it seemed like a pretty wholesome show. I don't know, I, I guess it was... Somebody was telling me there was some strange stuff in that show, and I, I watched it so long ago that I don't remember, but some weird stuff. But, but for the most part, just good, wholesome values and morals and so on. And that's what Hollywood does. And I got this from Jason Coley, too, in the documentary. Hollywood mixed, the, instead of God's righteousness being proclaimed, they substitute with morals, right? So they teach you good morals, good ethics sometimes. His ministers are ministers of righteousness. They'll teach you some good things, right? They mix that in. It's rat poison is, what, 1% strychnine or something, and the rest of it is healthy food. That's what Satan does. They're ministers of righteousness, teaching you morality. Not teaching you biblical righteousness, but morality. And morality is whatever you want it to be. I mean, morality is, is whatever the society thinks is a good thing. It's, you know, good behavior. We must all seriously consider the entertainment that we allow ourselves to see and hear. Now, I'm not up here. I'm not going to tell you to never watch another movie again. I'm not going to tell you to never listen to, to popular music again. I'm not telling you that. I think there's some movies that you absolutely should stay away from, and there's some music that you should absolutely stay away from. But I'll let you be the judge of that. But I just want to sound the clarion call that we should seriously consider the entertainment that we allow ourselves to see and hear. If you watch movies or you listen to music, you should do so with your guard up at all times and scrutinize what you and your children watch or listen to. 1 Thessalonians 5.21 says, Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. We should not watch or listen to anything without scrutinizing it. 
And my wife will tell you, when we watch movies, and it's really hard to find a decent movie to watch at all. We've been watching The Andy Griffith Show on Netflix, which is pretty wholesome, but even they, they even have feminism back in, in the 60s back there. Um, but anyway, for the most part, it's a pretty wholesome show, and there's some good, you know, good morals that Andy's teaching his son and all that kind of thing. And, and it's funny, and it, you know, it's, it's pretty decent stuff, I think. But anyway, when we've watched movies, and she can tell you, I'm probably like the worst guy in the world to watch movies with because I'm watching it with a scrutinizing eye and I'm pointing out every single thing that's wrong with it. See that feminist agenda there? See that sodomite agenda there? Look at those fornicators. Everything. You probably wouldn't want to watch a movie with me, although I wouldn't say anything if I was, I wouldn't interrupt your movie. But when I'm with my wife, I don't mind interrupting the movie with her and I point out every single thing that's wrong and everything that's, that's fictitious as well. So I just. I can't hardly enjoy a movie. I watch some action movie and I'm thinking, that's impossible. They can never do that. You know, the laws of physics wouldn't allow that. So I know I'm crazy. But anyway, but the point is, the point is when you watch stuff, watch it and scrutinize it because evil communication corrupts good manners. It will affect the way that you think and the way that you live. And especially for your kids. If you got kids and the younger they are, it will affect them. It's not just movies, music. And I just want to ask you a question. Just think about this. I wrote this down this morning. I'll put it in the outline later. But what kind of fruit does music like heavy metal or rap or punk rock or some of that stuff, what kind of fruit does music like that bear? Just think about it. Think about the, mu think about the music itself, the electric guitar, the, the, it's loud, it's rash, it gets your heart all pumping and gets you all pumped up and all this stuff. What, the music itself, think about that. The lyrics, think about the lyrics. And you probably can't understand them because they're screaming at the top of their lungs, which that's the evidence of a madman, right? So you're playing this crazy music, right? You're screaming at the top of your lungs and you're screaming obscenities for the most part and ungodly stuff that you might not even be able to understand. Just think about that. Does, what kind of fruit does that bear? Is that the fruit of the spirit? Rap music, for goodness sakes. I mean, do I have to say anything more? Have you ever listened to that stuff? Most of it is, is wicked. They talk about evil, wicked stuff, fornicating and all kinds of other stuff, and you know all about that. Does that bear the fruit of the Spirit? Compare the effect on your spirit when you listen to that type of music, heavy metal, rap, punk rock, that kind of stuff, and when you listen to classical music. Compare how that affects your spirit. How do you feel after you get done listening to heavy metal? I mean, your heart's racing, you're pumped up, you're whatever. How do you feel when you get to listen to classical music? You're at peace, right? What is the kingdom of God? Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Do these other types of music, do they characterize the fruit of the Spirit? Let me just read you the fruit of the Spirit and just think about ACDC and Metallica and Megadeth and Led Zeppelin and whatever, all that other stuff. I don't listen to any of it. Or Eminem and, and all the rap and Jay-Z and, and all this other garbage and stuff that I did used to listen to, unfortunately, I'm ashamed to say. Just compare that music and just think, and then read this verse and tell me if that music fits right into the context of this verse. If it does, by all means, go out and listen to it. If it doesn't, consider what you're listening to. That's all I'm asking you. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm not telling you what to listen to. Galatians 5, verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Now, the last I checked, those are not words to lyrics of heavy metal or rap songs. I, I don't think I've, I've never heard anything like that. I don't know of any, any of those type of songs with uh, these words in the title of them or, or any such thing like that. Let me give you another litmus test. Look at the book of Philippians. Look at Philippians 4. Here's another one. Run your entertainment. Run your movies. Run your music. Run your art. Run your whatever. Run it through this filter here and see if it passes. Philippians 4 and verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Now, I dare say that does not describe the music that I just talked about. It doesn't describe a lot of the movies that are out there. I'm not against music, per se. I'm not against movies, per se. You know, I'm not against that stuff. I'm just saying be cautious about what you listen to. 
Let me ask you a question, one more thing on the heavy metal and the rap. And just be honest with yourselves, could you study the Bible while listening to that music? Because some people, they can study when they listen, you know? Now, I mean, if you could, I, I don't know. That just seems, I don't know. I, that's, I couldn't, I can tell you that much. That's not a standard necessarily, but could I, on the other hand, study the Bible listening to classical music? Absolutely, I could do that. I generally don't. I don't listen to anything when I study the Bible, but I could. For me personally, if there's words at all, I have a hard time studying the Bible if I'm if because I, 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 I latch onto the words. Um, but but just the type of music. I mean, I couldn't listen to heavy metal and be reading the Bible. I mean, that just to me those two things just don't mix. Now maybe maybe you don't agree, and that's fine. Being discerning and circumspect or be discerning and circumspect when it comes to what you allow your eyes to see and your ears to hear. That's why I read Ephesians 5, 14 through 17. I'm almost done here. I just I got to finish this up. I know this is long, and I, I do apologize for that, but I think it's important enough that it was worth keeping you. Ephesians 5, 14 through 17. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and rise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. A lot of us, I think, have been sleeping with the entertainment that we allow ourselves to, to have and the pollutions that we allow to get in our minds and we're all guilty of this we've been sleeping and Paul says get uh, get awake see then that you walk circumspectly looking around paying attention not as fools but as wise redeeming the time because the days are evil you realize talk about redeeming the time things that you watch and listen to will stick in your head forever you know that you know what I'm talking about I could this is pathetic but I could sing you verbatim some horrible songs that I used to listen to in high school 20 years ago I could sing you verbatim a song that I have never heard in 20 years which is nothing but filth now let me tell you what if I would have read a Bible verse 20 years ago could I repeat it back to you if I've never read it for 20 years of course not Right? I've got Bible verses that I've read a thousand times and I still can't quote them just right and I've got to go look for them. Right? But boy, I'll tell you, listen to a Jay-Z song 20 years ago and I could quote you every word of it. It has a power and an effect on your mind and when you listen to that stuff, it's going to stick in your mind. Pornography sticks in your mind. Anybody that's ever seen it knows. You can never get it out of there. That's why I'm just telling you to be careful about the stuff that you watch and listen to because it's going to have effects on you for a long time. It says in Psalm 101 and verse 3, Psalm 101 and verse 3, David said that he would put no wicked thing before his eyes. Psalm 101 and verse 3. <clears throat> David says, I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. Boy, if that's not talking about Hollywood, I don't know what is. I will put no wicked thing before my eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. They turn aside to devils. They told you that they did that. I read you the quotes from their own mouths. I will put no wicked thing before mine eyes. Movies and music that have satanic or occultic themes or evil and ungodly messages in them should be destroyed. I'm not saying all music, I'm not saying all movies, but when you have movies and music that clearly have occultic, satanic, or just evil and wicked themes and lyrics, they should be destroyed. And I have a Bible verse that will give you that precedent, that principle. Look at Acts 19, 18 through 19. I'll tell you, I, when I listened to that documentary by Jason Coley, afterwards, the couple of movies that I had left, I just took them and snapped them and put them in the garbage. I thought, you know what? I'm just done. They weren't all that bad, but they weren't all that good either. <coughs> I'm not telling you to do that with all your movies or anything. I'm just saying if you have movies that are just patently bad, evil, wrong, then you want to get rid of that stuff. Acts 15 and verse 33. No, what am I doing? Acts 19, pardon me. Acts 19, verses 18 through 19. And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. Many of them also which used curious arts brought their books together and burned them before all men. And they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. 
You see, when these Ephesians were converted to be Christians, they were involved in curious arts. That's occultic stuff, right? They were reading satanic things. They were involved in witchcraft, right? That kind of stuff. And they burned those things. They didn't sell them. They could have made a fortune, 50,000 pieces of silver. That's a lot of money. They could have made a lot of money off that, but they burned it. They got rid of that stuff. We are all being programmed by Satan's entertainment industry, whether we realize it or not. We are being programmed. Do I need to prove it? What do they call television? Programming, right? Television programming. I don't think that's by accident. It's programming. They are programming us. We are being programmed to think in a certain way. Remember the gay marriage example? Nobody would think that way, or very few people would think that way if it wasn't for television, right? If it wasn't for the media. That we are being programmed. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, in verse 33, to be not deceived. 1 Corinthians 15, in verse 33. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. See, we can't, none of us can watch all kinds of filth and let that come into our minds and not be corrupted by it. None of us can. Paul says, don't be deceived. If you think that you can watch and listen to ungodly, satanic things and not be corrupted by it, you're deceived. Paul says, don't be deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Like I said, music and images stick in your mind for a long time and they're very hard, if not impossible, to remove. I know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> I've recommended it already and I'll give you the name of it. I recommend that you watch, it's a sermon documentary. It's basically his sermon and then it's put to still images for the most part. Maybe some videos in there, I don't remember. Anyway, it's called Hollywood Satanic Roots, the movie Reloaded, Jason Cooley. And I gave you the YouTube link there to it. I think it's about an hour, a little over an hour, maybe an hour and a half long. And he gives you a lot more detail than I did. So with this sermon and then with his sermon, you put the two of them together, you're going to have a pretty good idea about Hollywood. <clears throat> Just remember, we're being entertained by devils. Don't, don't forget that. So getting back to the sermon, the title, The Prince of the Power of the Air, shows that Satan's realm is the atmosphere of this planet and that the air is the medium in which he exercises his power, especially through the media today. So I thank you for your kind and patient attention and pray for me that I don't end up in prison or dead. <laughs>